So last night on Raw, we saw the play-by-play -play debut of Joe Tessero, um, who's known to be working also still with ESPN and known for doing Monday Night Football, college football, boxing, college basketball, you name it. And obviously this deal is going to allow him to still do some of that. Uh, I'm not sure about Monday Night Football. ESPN's got plenty of people to fill that gap if they do double headers, but we'll see. If there's an exception, I'm sure WWE worked it out to where Joe can do the football over the wrestling, but, you know, we'll find out in the future if that's the case. But with that said, with that said, a lot of people have been actually praising Joe Tessero, Tessero, I can't pronounce the name, but have been praising Joe uh, for, his, um, for his enthusiasm, for the fact that he brings a real sports authentic-like feel to the product as well as he brings in energy, an energy that is, you know, needed when it comes to this, you know, kind of product. And from what I've heard, I thought he did okay too. You know, and you could tell that he's not only a fan, but you could also tell that he's learning, that he was trained. This is why when you go back to the pre-show on SummerSlam, you know, Michael Cole introduced him uh, to the world. Because I think what's going on is they are working with him on occasions. They're basically working with him and training him uh, to do, you know, to do a good job. And not just on his initial day, but going forward. Now, is he going to pick up on a lot of the moves and everything? No. You know, that's why you have someone like Wade Barrett there. That's why you have someone like Michael Cole, Corey Graves. You know, so that way they could teach him, you know, what the moves are. You know, and how to implement that in with storytelling. But yeah, overall, people thought he did a great job. And I have to agree that he did. And I think one of the main reasons, and JD didn't mention this uh, in his review last night. I don't know what Solomon said or what Alex or anybody else said. Uh, but I'm sure they might all agree that the reason Joe did a great job is he didn't have Vince McMahon in his ear. That's right. You think Adam Verk, you know, Jimmy Smith, um, Kevin Patrick, you know, you think all those guys, you know, as of recently, they tried to be the lead guy on Raw for play-by-play? -play? You don't think they had uh, Vince McMahon in their ear? They did. That is why I think it was hard for them to really adapt, you know, to being the play-by-play -play guy. Because let's be honest, they may have not known much, you know, uh, about the product, about the moves, or how to tell the story and everything. But you can see the potential. You can see the potential with them. You know, Adnan, Adnan Verk and Jimmy Smith above, you know, all three. Patrick, you know, kind of like more. Patrick, I th will agree, was more suited for backstage, you know, interviewing and stuff. So, or recapping. So I'll give, so I'll give you that. But at least he tried. And there were times he did show some improvement. There is no doubt about that. There are times he did show improvement. But, but you know, out of the three, Adnan, Adnan Verk and Jimmy Smith, I think, had potential to be that guy. The only issue was Vince McMahon was in their ear. Here, they have people in their ear, but they're not as demanding as Vince. Yeah, they have Michael Cole, who's the lead guy for WWE for almost, you know, three decades, you know, talking to him. You know, you, they have Michael Cole talking to him. And Michael Cole, you could tell, is probably the kind of guy that's not going to be like, oh, say this, say that. No, he's going to be the kind of guy that's going to train with him before, and he's going to talk him through it throughout the event. So I think Michael Cole being in his ear, along with, you know, on occasions Triple H being in his ear, are going to be beneficial because they're not going to be so demanding like Vince was. Vince was more like, you got to do this, you got to say that, do this, do that. And, I mean, you hear what Michael Cole has said, right? You've heard what Renee Parquet, you know, has said, you know, when she was there. You hear what Jonathan Coachman has said. Everybody that's been in that play, that lead announcer booth, you know, temporarily or you know, semi-temporarily or whatever. You've all heard what they have said, that Vince McMahon was a nightmare. He was a nightmare to work with. And it didn't matter if you were doing play-by-play. -play. It didn't matter if you were color commentary or you were going to be the next play-by-play. -play. Everybody said that he was a nightmare, that they, 
It's like he did not want them to do it certain ways. He was in their ear, basically harassing them, you know, and, and to doing it his way. I mean, heck, moral now, moral now, uh, you could tell the difference, you know, between him on SmackDown and him on Raw. I mean, not Raw, but him on NXT. You could see that. Yeah, he was able to be a little bit of what he was in NXT when he was on SmackDown, but you could definitely tell that there was a difference. Like, on NXT, he had more freedom. He had more freedom to be himself, to do his job without, you know, without, you know, having fear of, you know, Vince McMahon being in his ear because the only person in his ear was Triple H and, I think, to an extent, Michael Cole, and that was it. There was no Vince McMahon. But when he went to SmackDown, forget it. You had Triple H, but it was mostly Vince McMahon. So it was kind of, I think, that along with Bradshaw, you know, hazing him and all that, you know, harassing, bullying him and all that, um, I think that's what led to him saying, I'm done. I'm done. I mean, again, I don't think it was all Bradshaw, because I think Bradshaw did that, believe it or not, at the behest of Vince. Vince probably said, hey, intimidate this guy, bully him, whatever. And that was just enough. That was just enough for him. You know, so... So yeah, you could definitely you could have definitely tell uh, seen the difference I should say between NXT Moral No and SmackDown Moral No because it was night and day. It was night and day. The point I'm getting at, the point I'm getting at is with Joe here, you know, and him being praised for having you know a lot of enthusiasm, bringing a real authentic sports feel and excitement. You know, to the announcing and the play-by-play, you know, while still learning on the fly, while still learning, you know, not just, you know, during the event, but, you know, prior to it and everything. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell by hearing that kind of praise. You know, you can definitely tell that, you know, the people in their ear are not as visceral. They're not as demanding. They're more like, hey... You know, he, you know, hey, take it, take it one step at a time. I'll guide you through it, and that's it. That's it. You know, so to me, I think that's why Joe Tessero did a great job. And if they continue to do it this way and help, you know, teach him uh, along the way as well when he's off, you know, when he's off of, uh, when he's off, you know, doing other things or he has some days himself, you know, the more they train him and teach him, and the more he practices himself the better he's going to get. And let's not forget, guys, let's not forget, he has a colleague at ESPN that works for WWE like he's doing that's taking time off because of college football, and that's Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee brings an authentic enthusiasm that people enjoy. So to me, having Pat there and Pat's close friendship with Michael Cole, I think Joe's going to be fine. I think Joe's going to be totally fine. And if this is just a sample of what he brings, and the fact that they got us to, and the fact that they took the effort at SummerSlam to get us to know who he is and let us know when he was coming in, definitely tells you that not only is this a new regime, you know, under you know, uh, T, under TKO and Nick Khan and you know, and so on, and, and Triple H and everything, but it also tells you that they're willing to take the time to teach their new play-by-play -play guys the ropes, to kind of teach them, hey, be yourself, but, you know, here's this, here's that, you know, um, and, and how to, and, you know, and how to kind of, you know, mention them, talk about them, you know, maybe if they want to kind of break them down and all that in detail, you know, they're giving them that opportunity. They're at least giving us, an, them and us, an advancement as to who this person is, you know, what their background is, you know, and what's going to happen, you know, and, you know, what they could be bringing to the table along with what they're going to learn, you know, not only are they giving us an advancement of that, like they did with him back at, you know, the beginning of SummerSlam, but they're also giving him plenty of time between then, now, and even before it, I'm sure, to learn the ropes, and he's still going to learn. And I think that's why you see that difference. It's not Vince McMahon in their ear. It's not like someone like Michael Cole trying to help and guide and then Vince McMahon taking over and saying, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest here, pal. I'll do the rest. You know, I'll, I'll guide him the rest of the way, pal. You know, it's, it's not him. It, you know, it's not Vince. Because, again, you could tell that Vince was always in the ear even of the newer guys. 
You know, I think that's why they didn't work out so well. Jimmy Smith, you know, I think out of all three was probably the closest. But again, I think it was Vince that got in his ear. And I think he's even gone on record in alluding to something to that manner, to where he tried, Michael Cole tried to guide him, but Vince, you know, was the one always in his ear. So, and again, like I said earlier, there are stories, you know, from people that were in the announcer's booth with Michael Cole, you know, that basically you had Vince in their ear getting on them about stuff that made no nonsense. So, you know, so obviously you could tell. You could tell the difference. You could tell the difference when it comes to who's in their ear now and who, you know, who was in their ear prior. So to me, I think that's why Joe's getting a lot of praise because he's able to be himself. He's able to bring that enthusiasm he brings over from ESPN, you know, in his play-by-play of college football, NFL, boxing, you know, basketball, whatever. You know, he's able to bring that over to, to WWE and basically add that to what he's learning. And over time, he might he might be basically, uh, you know, he might be, you know, the golden nugget, if you will. He might be, he might be basically, you know, the golden egg, egg that you least expect. He might be that surprise, that wild card that you don't see coming that's going to blow your minds. But we'll see. Give him time. He will see. We will see. But out of all of them. So far, out of all the other ones that have tried, he has been the one right now, in just his first night, that has basically shown in a lot of people's eyes the potential to be great. And again, you see it due to the fact that they introduced him prior to SummerSlam. They've probably been working with him uh, since then and maybe even before. And now you kind of, you're kind of getting that result as to what he brings to the table. You know, um, as far as play-by-play goes, and, you know, pray, you know, kind of give it to God. It works out for him in the end, especially if he moves over to SmackDown with Wade Barrett um, next year. Because the plan, apparently, is to do a three-man booth, or at least a three-man booth, uh, on Raw with Corey Graves, Pat McAfee, and Michael Cole, thus... Asserting it, asserting it as the A show on Netflix, you know, being on you know, the A show uh, that it is, especially with it debuting on Netflix at the beginning of the year, you know, and him and Wade Barrett going to SmackDown. So it's going to be inter- so it's going to be interesting to see what he does. But I think, you know, under this new regime, he's not going to get pressured so much, and people like Hunter and Michael Cole are going to be there to guide him, you know, throughout the throughout the live uh, edition of Raw and then eventually SmackDown as well as work with him, you know, every now and then afterwards. But let me know what your guys' thoughts were. What were your thoughts on Joe Tessaro's uh, debut? Do you think he did do a great job? Let me know. Love to hear from your – love to hear your thoughts on it. And until next time, guys, I will talk to you later. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notification. Check out the Teespring store for merchandise you can't get anywhere else. Link is in the description. Get yourself a mug, a T-shirt, or a sweater in time for the fall. Be greatly appreciated if you did. Also, check out the other places you can find my content at Rumble, Odyssey, Vimo, Spotify for Podcasters, iHeartRadio, Pandora, you name it. But guys, until next time, let me know what your thoughts are on Joe's debut, and I am out.